What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a really awesome little mini gaming PC powered by an 8 core 16 thread Ryzen APU and a GTX 1650 low profile GPU. So when it comes to these mini PCs, I'm a huge fan of integrated graphics on these Ryzen APUs, but I definitely wanted to get a little more out of this machine here because when it comes down to it, the APUs are great for emulation at kind of the stock resolutions, maybe up to 720p. Some of the older stuff can go up to 1080, but with the 1650, we can actually hit 4K with a lot of our favorite emulators. And when it comes to PC gaming, this offers way better performance than the built-in iGPU on these Ryzen chips. And with this build, I wanted to go as small as possible, so for the case, I'm using the Goodysari A02. So obviously, this is a small form factor mini ITX case. You will have to add a power supply, and this only supports a flex power supply. I opted for a cheaper 350 watt that you can pick up on Amazon. I've actually used kind of the same setup in the past for a lower powered PC and it actually worked out really well. Now this case also supports a dual slot low profile GPU and that's how we're going to fit this 1650 in here. When it comes to the motherboard, I opted for the ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming. This also has Thunderbolt 3 built in and initially I was going to go Alder Lake with this build. But unfortunately, the cooler I ordered stated that it had the LGA 1200 bracket, but it didn't come included in the box and it's going to take a month for them to ship it. I would have loved to do a 12th gen Intel build in this thing, but instead we're going to go with AMD. And for the CPU, we're using the 5700G. We've got 8 cores and 16 threads, does a great job on the CPU side of things. And if you wanted to just use this for light gaming on the iGPU that's built in, which is a Radeon 8, it also works really well. But like I mentioned, we're adding that GTX 1650 so we can get a lot more out of this machine. And it does fit in this AO2 case quite nicely. Now when it comes to RAM, I'm going with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4000 megahertz. It'll be running in dual channel. And the cooler I opted for here is one I've used in the past on the 5700G. It's the copper version of the Thermalrite X47. And I'm going to be using the stock fan on the cooler, but I also have a Noctua just in case it's a bit too loud. And I'm also going to be adding two smaller fans to this case because there's a spot to mount them just to get a little more airflow inside of this tiny setup. So yeah, the AO2 case is one of the smallest form factor cases that I found that supports a low profile GPU. I mean, this thing is actually tiny and it should give us some really good performance at 1080p AAA gaming and especially when it comes to emulation up to 4K and a lot of the stuff that we like to run. This isn't going to be a build tutorial, but I did want to show you how this turned out. We've got that mini ITX ASRock board in here. Uh, cable management can be a little bit of a pain with this, but uh, once you get everything set up, you can kind of zip tie all of it out of the way, and it does turn out really nicely. And with everything kind of tied up and out of the way, it looks something like this. Not too bad, but you know, when it comes down to it, it's really that power supply cabling. It's just kind of a mess with all those colored cables. But in the end, you know, the case top is going to be on this unit. We've got that GPU in here, and everything went together really nicely. Now, this case here only comes in black on Amazon. I've actually seen one in silver, but I can't find it on Amazon anymore. So I just went ahead and did an enamel paint job on this. It's actually a seafoam color, but from my camera, it's coming up as blue in the video. So there is a little more green to it, and I personally think it looks really good. This case can be laid down in the vertical position, or it can be set up in the horizontal position. It's got these four feet here that can be swapped from the back side to the bottom. So you do have a couple options, and it's really up to you how you want to set this thing up. I've got Windows 10 Pro installed on this unit. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 5700G, 8 cores, 16 threads. And the way it's set up right now, I'm not doing any overclocking on the CPU due to the limited space and the smaller cooler. But this does a really good job at the stock clocks anyway. For that GPU, we have the GTX 1650, and this is the GDDR5 version. It's not the GDDR6 version. It's still a great performer for a low profile car. But now I want to jump right into a little bit of PC game testing. And since I don't have the feet on the bottom, I'm kind of blocking the airflow. I'm going to set this horizontal for now. So here we are with Forza Horizon 5, and I'm actually really impressed with the performance. We're at 1080p, I've got resolution scale set to ultra quality, and we're at high settings. So I'm not going to leave a link in the description to the power supply I use because it is a bit loud. You will have to spend a little more on a better power supply, and that's really the only annoyance I have so far about this small form factor build, and it really comes down to just using a cheap power supply. CPU temps are a bit higher than, you know, you really want in a bigger case, but we're working with a very small form factor case and a low profile cooler. 
I haven't seen this thing thermal throttle yet while gaming, and I'm sure we can definitely get it to do it while running Cinebench and stressing out all 8 cores and 16 threads. But as you can see, with Forza Horizon 5 here, high settings, 1080p, we're actually getting an average of 87 FPS out of this game, and uh, it looks really good playing just fine on this machine. CPU temp is sitting at 73 right now, and it looks to be kind of locked there. We're only at about 40% utilization. It's not bad, but I can definitely see the temps on this thing get a bit higher once we start stressing out that CPU over 50 to 60%. We do have more room in this case for a taller cooler. The one I have is only 47 millimeters high, but you can fit up to a 63 in this, so there are other options out there. Quick update, I swapped out the stock thermal right fan for a Noctua, and from within the BIOS, I've just messed around with the fan curve a little bit. Now, the stock fan could actually handle this and keep it a lot cooler than we just saw with Forza Horizon 5, but it was a lot louder than the Noctua, so with this, that new fan curve, everything's looking a lot better with the temps. So the next thing I did was run some benchmarks, and first up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 1441, multi, 6512. That multi is looking a bit lower than I usually get with the 5700G, but then again, I usually can throw more wattage at it or do some overclocking. Next on the list, we have 3D Mark Time Spy coming in with a 3863, and the final one I ran here was just Firestrike with an 8,789. So yeah, for a small form factor build, I think these benchmarks look really good, but now it's time to move over to some PC gaming, and then we'll hit up some emulation. Here's Doom Eternal, 1080p, high, and I did try Ultra, but we don't have enough VRAM. We only got 4 gigs with this GTX 1650, so it wouldn't allow me to go all Ultra with it. But at high settings, 1080p, we're getting an average of 74 FPS. GTA 5 is another one that works really well on this machine. 1080p, high settings, we're getting an average of 118 FPS out of this. And if I was to just turn VSync on, set it at 60, like the monitor I'm using right now, I could probably take some of these settings up to Ultra with no issues at all. I wanted to throw at least one fighting game in here. This is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, 1080p. We're maxed out here, only pulling around 23 to 24 watts from that CPU, and it's gonna run at 60 just fine. I haven't seen any dips at all. And finally here, for the PC gaming side of things, Witcher 3, 1080p, medium settings. If I took everything up to high, it does dip down to around 57 FPS, but at medium settings, 1080p, I still think it looks really good, and we're getting an average of 82 FPS. So basically, everything that I've tested so far works really well, but now I want to move over to some emulation, because that's one of the main things I'll be doing on this machine. And first on the list, we have PS2 using PCSX2, 4K DirectX 11 back end. We've got Gran Turismo 4 running at full speed. Now there was another game I tested, which was Shadow of the Colossus, and it wouldn't quite do it at 4K unless it turned a lot of hacks on. So I dropped it down to 1440p, and it played fine. So I mean, some of these games will have to be dropped down just a bit, but they still look great upscale. Here we have 3DS using the Citra emulator. This uses the OpenGL back end, and these NVIDIA cards work really well with this emulator. This is DOA Dimensions, and we're at 5x resolution. I'm going to tell you, if you've never played these 3DS games upscaled over 3x, then you're definitely missing out, because it's a totally different system when you can go up this high. Here we have some Wii U emulation using the SimU emulator. I did have to drop this down from 4K to 1440p. We got that Vulcan back end going, but it's running great at 60. There are games that do run at 4K with this setup here using the SimU emulator, but Breath of the Wild was one of those that just maxed out that 1650 at 4K, so 1440p is definitely the way to go. And finally, we have PS3 using RPCS3. Vulcan back in, 1440p, got Skate 3 here running really well at 60, and if you take a look at Afterburner, our CPU temp is around 81 degrees Celsius. While gaming, this was the highest that I saw this CPU go in this little system, but we're pulling 55 watts from it, so this one really loves those extra cores and threads, and it will pull a lot of power.
so overall, this actually turned out to be a really nice little mini PC. There are a couple little things that I'd like to change, like that power supply. I went real cheap with it. It was only 30 bucks for a 350 watt. The little fan in there is on the louder side, but if you threw a few more bucks at it, you can get something that's decently quiet. Another thing I would probably change is just putting a larger cooler in here. This is only 47 millimeters, the one I use now, but it will support up to a 63. And there's plenty of them on the market that'll fit something like this just fine. But when it comes to overall performance for PC gaming and emulation, this is a really good little machine. 8 cores, 16 threads at 4.4 gigahertz, and that GTX 1650 can definitely get down with 1080p AAA gaming. And when it comes to emulation, 4K and 1440p is totally possible on this little thing. So overall, I think it turned out really nice. If you're interested in building something like this, I will leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.